Okay, it's it's two o'clock Eastern time and we'll kick this off. This is our first Community Connections free webinar series here at Bywater for um, 2024. So happy new year to all. And we're gonna kick off this webinar series with talking about implementing Koha at your library. So this is really focused on the process that which go which a library goes through when they're implementing Koha at their library with Bywater Solutions. My name is Kelly and I have Jesse here to answer any chats. So if you do have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat or the Q&A. This is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel. All of our webinars that we produce are kept on our YouTube channel. So feel free to peruse those topics that we've covered in the past. So I'm going to kick this off with talking about, you know, the beginning of an implementation process. You're going to have a team of specialists here at Bywater dedicated to your library to ensure this migration um, is a success. So we assign a team of specialists to your library, and that will include a Koha educator, so somebody will, who will help you through Koha, a data migration specialist, that's going to help you work through your data and the data mapping and those data needs. A systems lead. So we're talking about all your system connections. So think about those electronic resources, those um, maybe um, print technology that you're using, lockers, e-commerce, all of that will be connected and have be set up through our systems. Um, department. And then finally, a project manager who will make sure that the whole project is going well and is another great point of contact when necessary. We first start off with just, you know, talking about the data. So what we really love in this migration process is being able to pull the data from your existing ILS system and putting it into a COHA system. This is just an, you know, an export of your data, and you will meet with a data migration specialist who has worked, who have worked with multiple different ILS systems and seen those sets of data they're going to receive, and then work with you as um, in your library as you decide where that data is going to live in Koha. You'll hear me say this quite a bit during today's um, webinar, but you know, talking about change and, you know, reevaluating some things that you're currently doing is always something that can be done. Looking at your data in a different way, in a different light may make you say, hey, let's try it a different way. So, you know, we're here for you. We've worked with many different systems and, you know, tackled those questions and concerns and, um, and we're happy to do it for your library. So that's just one of the steps that we're going to go through, just talking about your, your data specifically. And I, I know that's a big question for libraries is like, what are you going to do with all this data? Can we bring all this data over? And we'll dig into that in a second as well. But taking a larger look at the implementation process and just that timeline as you kind of get it in your head when you're thinking about possibly moving over to a different ILS, specifically Koha, is kind of getting that bird's eye view of what 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 all is what are all the milestones and you know points of interest along the way. We start off with a kickoff call. So most of the time in the very beginning as you're deciding on your ILS, your new ILS, you're working with the salespeople, myself or Jesse or Adam, and you know, we transition you over to our operations. So you're going to be introduced to our project manager and a Koha educator, and a data specialist and a systems person to find out more about your library on their level. They're going to have different questions and needs and really talking about the tools that we use as a company to ensure that milestones, goals, um, communication are all addressed within this migration. You know, so we talk about the different tools we use, um, the ticketing system, how to contact us. We love to hear from you. You know, you could pick up the phone, submit a ticket. Um, we we want to make sure that you feel comfortable with those processes. Then we do also dig into your data migration. We talk about our expectations. 
what's really going to happen is you're going to export your data the first time. Our data specialist will manipulate it, import it into a COHA system. And then from that moment on, you have that opportunity to play around with the COHA system and see how it looks. You will do one more data migration at the very right before your go live and take another extract of your data. And we'll get into that, but that's your last data migration to have a fresh set of data as you go live with Koha. As a prior educator with Koha, the training part of this process is where I kind of like love to talk about just because we need to get that change moving. We need to talk to all our staff. We need to get them all on board and start exploring the Koha system, getting that hands-on experience. We're going to have, you know, multiple policy calls and meetings to talk about your library specifically. The beauty of Koha is used worldwide. It is used by small libraries, you know, one-room schoolhouses, all the way up to you know, from one of our partners, over 125 branches, one COHA system. It's used in academic institutions, special libraries, museums, health libraries. So it is very customizable. And so we want to learn as much as we can about your library so we can really customize the COHA system to work for you. After that, you know, you're going to have this test site. We're going to have manipulated through the data. We're going to be talking about it through the training, changing some things up, doing some admin background, you know, system preferences and making sure that works. And then we're going to have you, after your training, you have some period to test that. So again, thinking about, hey, I'm going to be using this every day, starting this, this specific date. How do I do that checkout again? Or how do I work with that claim return? Or how do I catalog a book again? Um, it's, it's just the opportunity to get into the system as much as possible in that test site. Your data is in a test site, so you can really feel like what that's like. And then finally, getting to that go live date. So we're grabbing that data again, we're putting it into a Koha system, all that customization we've created, those system preferences and, and those shelving locations have all been put in there ready for you to go live. You know, I make this a big star at the end, but honestly, that's not the end of our time together at all. You know, we have a post go live call. We want to talk to you, see how things are going. Our ticketing system is still your opportunity to send in tickets, ask questions. Our phone calls still work and we can get, get in touch with us. You're a partner when, when you go live during the implementation, you're a partner with us. And so we are going to continue to support you and help you through that Koha little process and then beyond. So you took that big, big view of the process and now we're gonna get into just a couple of things that we know that are, are big questions on, on folks' mind. Data extraction. Hey, what can you take from my old system into Koha? You know, I've listed most of the things that most people ask about, but if you're ever unsure, send it on. We're happy to give it a shot. We're happy to see if there's something in our database schema that we can put that information. We do not want you to lose information at all. So we're talking about, you know, your authority records, your course reserves, your vendor information, serial data, Find, yes, we want your completed checkouts. That's your historic because we want you to be able to run those reports and get that specific data. And again, our data specialists have worked with multiple ILS systems in the past. So it's probably not the first time they're going to see that data. And they have notes and detailed information on, hey, this is what this means in this specific ILS. And it goes over here in Koha. And then together, once we have your data and we've looked at it, your data specialist and educator will work with your library to talk about the structure of Koha and how your data is gonna work within the Koha system. You know, um, one of the large probably hurdles that a lot of us um, go through when we ch make changes in software systems, I think about like if we go from you know, Microsoft Excel to Google Sheets, or we go from an Apple phone to a Galaxy phone, terminology, settings, you know, just how things, where things live, and specifically that terminology. Is it under settings or admin? 
um, do we call it fast cataloging or on the fly? We really dig into that. So talking about how COHA is organized really allows you as your library can start thinking about how it's going to work um, in the COHA system. We talk about patron categories. So what patron categories does your library currently have? And what are those reasons? Do you have a fee? Do you have a specific length of time for that patron category? Um, do they have different circulation rules? So maybe a resident patron versus a non-resident patron. Or if you're an academic, is it a student versus a community member versus a faculty? And then we talk about how COHA structures those patron categories. And specifically, patron categories work with circulation and goes hand in hand with the next one here, your item types. A lot of people see this as your material format. So thinking about books, DVDs, um, large print, reference, course reserves. Now we're, you know, we've got so many great libraries out there. Think of your library of things. Those are your item types. Maybe you have gardening tools and how we're going to have those um, visualized in the COHA system. And then on the far right of these choices, we have both shelving locations and collection codes. These are ways to kind of organize your, um, your collection, your physical items within the system, helping your patrons find that material. You know, we think about when we work in like a public library, we're often asked many times, where's the bathroom? You know, how, where's the children's room? So this is a way to identify where things live in the library, first floor, second floor, children's room, and then collection codes. Another way to organize your um, structure of your library in a different way, maybe they don't all, all these items don't live together on the shelf, but they have one similar characteristic. I always think of graphic novels. They're all over the library, whether they're in young adult or teen or children, adult fiction, nonfiction. Um, and that may be a big search for your library. So that would be an opportunity to say, hey, I want to be able to easily say, hey, just search graphic novels in that collection code. So this is a great opportunity as we kind of start to dig into your library's um, role, what your library, your patrons are looking for, and specifically your staff and how, helping them organize the system. You know, we don't really dig too, <laughs> we don't think about the, you know, the database off too often, but we do talk about just how things are going to be structured in COHA. You know, there's codes. You know, we talk about, do you want to keep those codes? Sometimes there's such random numbers and letters that you're like, oh my gosh, we'd love for our juvenile fiction not to be KLM. For whatever reason, it's always been KLM and that doesn't make sense. Your codes can change. We just ask that you keep them short and sweet, 10 characters or less, no special characters and no spaces. Um, this is just a great time to say, I worked with a library that had all these P codes, like P whatever for categories, and they didn't even know what the codes meant because they didn't just, it just wasn't easy to remember. You get to identify those codes. Generally, from a staff point of view and from your patrons, they're never going to see those codes. Codes are for the back end. Your patrons and staff are going to see the descriptions you create. This implementation process is going to give you the opportunity to really look at your library policies, workflows, and procedures. This gives you the opportunity to look at how does your patron experience the catalog? What are they looking for? What would be helpful to them to have on there? Working with different libraries, we have maybe have in tuned specific processes because that's how it works in an ILS, but we could take a step back and say, oh, well, we're just trying to do A. Okay, well, we don't need to go to B and, and Z and D before we get to A. Maybe in Koha, we're going straight to A. So thinking about how simple we can make that and talking about those workflows. Sometimes we, you know, libraries put things in the mark data and then they realize, oh, I can put this in my item data. And that's going to be way easier for patrons and staff to be able to see. Simplifying, you know, we, Koha was, is an ILS that's web-based, created in 1999 by librarians. 
So they have specifically thought about how librarians work, those interactions we have with patrons, how our staff interact with the interface. And so clicks are very important. I shouldn't have to do too many clicks to do a simple, you know, check in or check out. That should either have a shortcut, that should be an easy click on the screen. So we're going to talk about simplicity a lot and how to streamline those processes. In addition, Koha gives you multiple ways to do the same thing. So then you can have users that choose to do it from the top menu bar or going to the home page and picking those. So just things like that. We, we love to just kind of give you different ways to do the same thing. And then finally, organization, really talking about, you know, your data, your workflows and how make that work. We love to talk to libraries. We love to talk about their processes. We love to hear their stories and how they're helping the community. Grab bags or like grouping of items. I just wish I lived in a community that had like a grab bag for date night or, you know, puzzles or library, you know, those tools that they're circulating and, you know, digging into how that's going to work in Koha. So, I've touched upon this a bit, but during that implementation, you know, we've kind of talked about your data, we've talked with our specialists, we've talked to our educator, we're going to continue to talk to these folks, our systems, during calls, policy calls, workflow calls, specific to circulation or specific to cataloging or tech services or acquisitions, because you want to know, we want to break it down into simple calls, let's talk about your um, workflows in your library. We generally do that through a Zoom. We love to talk to people face-to-face. -face. We love to see them. Um, we know that times are busy. We'll work with you on your schedule. We want to have the opportunity to really talk to the people that are making those decisions to make sure that we're setting it up correctly. On-site training. We encourage every library to do on-site training. We spend three days. It's a total immersive experience where we come on site, you have a hands-on, everyone has a computer and really gets to see the system with all the hard work your library admin has done and your the data specialist and the educator to get it ready for that on-site training. So your staff can come in and say, okay, let's start checking out and using our common patrons that we use, using the books right from your library. We can go ahead and start checking those out and searching for those. Lots of great time to, um, talk about workflows. We've, we've, I've gone through the label creation. I've gone through an OCLC connection setup. So getting in there and making receipt printers, being able to get in there and see your, your site. And then finally, having that test site is going to be crucial for your library. You're going to be able to see your data. You're going to be able to play with it. You're going to be able to start thinking about manipulations if you want to for your data and also going forward. Oh my goodness. We totally are not ready to use the electronic resource management module, but hey, it's there. Start thinking about in six months, I'm going to get into there and I'm going to be able to use that. So starting to be able to play around. I talked a little bit about testing, but it's really important. Um, we had a kind of a large design change to Koha in the last um, two, re two releases ago, which slightly changed a couple of the screens in Koha. And I know me personally found myself forgetting where I was supposed to go because of that change. And so remembering that testing and getting in there and getting that hands-on experience of like that muscle memory, getting that muscle memory going and going, okay, this is where I go. That's really important for myself and staff in general to get in there and test. The more you play in Koha, the more comfortable you'll be. When you start testing, start thinking about your workflows. What do we do when something gets lost? What's that workflow look like? How do I do that in Koha? How do I just create a patron in Koha and go through that? Maybe the on-site educator was there three days ago and now you're like, oh, let me try again. Let me get in there and create that patron. You know your data the best, so you're familiar with your data, just looking at your data, seeing what's been brought over. We've definitely had some fun surprises where maybe everyone was born in 
um, 2099 that came over in data. Hey, we found it. Let's fix it. You know, as people start to look and explore, there's a little, maybe there's some fun surprises and it's great to find them. So we can go ahead and change that or go, oh, I really like this. I didn't think I would, but now I like it because now I can see it. It's more clear. And then finally, during that testing, communication, talking to your data specialist, your educator in our ticketing system, our support team will get you to the right person as you go through that implementation process and making sure that you get to the right person so they can assist you. Let's just talk about resources a bit. Koha is web-based. It's been around since 1999. It is an open source community. So the Koha manual, it is online. You can access it at any point from any browser. It's also clickable right from the Koha interface. Your Koha interface will have a link right to the help manual. That help manual has step-by-step -step instructions. It has screenshots. Formerly, it was updated twice a year with our upgrades, but they have just evolved to make those changes immediate. So once a change has happened, and as we're looking towards the next upgrade, they'll start to up update it. So it will be one continuous manual, which is really exciting. So always accessible. Tutorial videos. Bywater prides itself on those that those videos and training resources that we create for our partners and anyone who uses Koha. It's free and open, just like Koha, free and open software, free and open resources. We create tutorial videos. We like to keep them short and sweet, keep your attention, three to five minutes. You learn that nice, quick thing. We did one last week on fast ad cataloging with Monday Minutes where Jesse and I get together once a week and talk about something really quick. It's a fun Monday, um, you know, grab your cup of coffee and watch us. But also if you're new to Koha and you're going through the backlog, you can go and look and watch as many as you want. Training resources um, such as like PDFs and testing processes and specific um, self-guided tutorials resources are all available. We are not the only people that create um, documentation. In addition to Koha and us, there are plenty of other opportunities online. Koha US is a um, community of Koha users. They create documentation, which is fantastic. There is a European company, PTFS Europe. They also create some fantastic documentation. And the Koha community creates a newsletter every month that says, hey, here's some new great training opportunities for you to learn things about Koha. And then finally, I think I've tooted our horn a bit, but Bywater Solutions has the opportunity to see lots of documentation um, as well. So no, if you're one of those people that like, I need to find that information, I can find it and I can do it, this is the place. If you're like, Kelly, one hat, one person library, submit a ticket and we'll do it for you. You know, that's really what it comes down to, but knowing that you can be empowered and you have some information at your, at your fingertips, it always makes me feel like nice and warm and fuzzy. Communication. One of the huge parts of our migration is making sure that you communicate and we communicate with you during this entire process. I feel like I've really nailed down, like we talk to you a lot. We have lots of meetings. We have lots of conversations. We're there at your library. We're talking, 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 but we never want you to feel as though you can't. So of course you have your phone call. You have our ticketing system. Um, you have our website. You can go ahead. We have a Koha listserv. We have a Bywater Slack channel for our partners. So once you're a partner with us, you can go on our Slack channel, talk to all the other partners, ask questions there, or find your answer through other people's conversations. So we want to be able to give you all the opportunities to get, get in touch with you. I was like those librarians that email us at like midnight and you're like, why are you working? Why are you working? And then you get somebody else who has responded, maybe one of our developers who's in at 5 a.m. and they're responding back to you. So it's barely like, whoo, super quick and they've solved your problem. So know that, you know, we're here for you whatever time of the day. I've touched on it a little bit, but I really want to just talk a, um, a bit more about the community. So Koha is an open source product. 
If you're not familiar with open source, think of Firefox. Firefox is probably the one place that has probably the largest use of open source users um, using their browser, and maybe you didn't even know it was open source. So Koha is an open source project product. It is used millions of people all over the world using it. They're either supported by a supporting company outside of the country, or they're doing it on their own because Koha has that capability. Integrations. I talked a little bit about you would have a systems lead that joins your migration process. Talking about those integrations, such as e-commerce, so PayPal, um, your cloud library or OverDrive, um, your RFIDs or your self-checkouts, all of those integrations, your EDI. I think we do a whole webinar on just third-party products. Um, and maybe Jesse can put like what we what products we support or we integrate with. Because we're open source, we have open you know, APIs. We're happy to work with other vendors connecting those products that you are using currently if they're not on the list. So definitely ask us if you need help, if you have a question about somebody you're working with. Developments. It is absolutely pan fantastic that our users of Koha can see what is going on, what developments are coming down the pike, what um, features and enhancements are being talked about and what's coming. Libraries pay for developments. Those developments that anybody, any library pays for and goes into a, a version of Koha, every library will have that development. It is open source in that way where everybody gets the same um, version of Koha, which is really fantastic. We have a strong community of Koha um, developers and um, community members that work hard in making every Koha release a, a smashing success with what they bring us every each and every release. And most of those are coming from libraries saying, wouldn't it be great? I would love, I would love an ERM. Here we go, here's an ERM. I would love a you know point of sale module. Okay, great, we have a point of sale module. Just knowing how the library world is evolving and that Koha is staying abreast of that because they are listening to the librarians and, and making sure that um, the, the products are up to date. And finally, working together. You know, you are, have the opportunity, first of all, through the, the Bywater Slack channel to talk to other Koha users, but you also can talk to users worldwide through the Koha listserv or getting involved in a, in a Koha um, conference that's annual or Koha US conference that's also annual and being able to see some great, fantastic things. Wow. Oh, good. Okay. I was just looking at the time. So please, it looks like there was lots of questions. Hopefully, um, looks like my little images didn't come through. I'm sorry about that. Um, there was any questions. Here's an, a sampling of the upcoming webinars. So we will be at PLA in um, April. Is that right? In Columbus. And we are going to do a webinar just kind of showing off what we're going to show off at PLA um, in February. So that's going to be a combo Aspen and Koha webinar. And then in March, we're going to dig into Koha. So it's an exploration of Koha. That's going to be 45 minutes where we kind of just look at all the modules and get in there and have some fun. And then finally, if you are new to Bywater and you want some more information or a personalized demo, please give us a call. That lovely man in the corner is Adam Brooks. He's our Koha sales consultant, which I'm realizing his name's not on there, but email sales at bywatersolutions.com and or give us a call 